just what do those big oil executives have to prove today on the Hill? I want to bring in an expert who not only advises energy companies, but also worked at BP Amico. Uh, she's Guiana Byrne. And uh, thanks so much for joining us again, Guiana. I know that we, were, we talked about a month ago or so when this crisis was uh, starting to really brew up. Uh, from these oil executives on the Hill, what do you want to hear today? Well, today the oil executives are going to make every effort to show that each of them within their own companies have put in place a number of safety measures that they've taken their own regulation and safety and emergency response to a whole new level. I mean, certainly they all need to make the case that uh, preventing a catastrophe of this magnitude can never happen again. And they will have to show detailed measures of how they have their own plans in place mm -hmm. within their own exploration and production shops. But even if they do all of that, Guiana, that's not going to be able to break their guilt by association with BP, right? No, that, that, that's exactly right. Right now there is a great deal of what I like to call guilt by association going on in the industry and what you're seeing is um, the producers um, to some extent uh, being held liable for the actions of BP. But what they will have to show is that they are putting in place um, all of the science and technology um, all the way down to the wellhead on how they can prevent these kinds of catastrophic events. What kind of emergency response will they have in place to address these kinds of emergencies? And, and yes, they are being, they will have to have um, some measures of right. uh, increased regulation in order to get over the hump here. Yeah, and, and we know that they're going to do that because we know they want to quell sort of this public fear about offshore drilling. But is this a case of uh, where we don't watch what they say, but we watch what they do? Well, well, yeah, they've got to restore the public trust. I mean, there, there has been an enormous erosion of the public trust in the industry. And I think what we don't want to fall into this trap of, you know, guilt by association. We have the moratorium in place. You know, I'd argue that, you know, the moratorium may, you know, hurt the industry and right, hurt but, but, American but, but, but jobs I mean, more than anything else. Right, but what I, what I mean, Guiana, is that, you know, they'll say all of this, they're putting in more safety regulations, they're going to make offshore drilling more safe. Uh, but isn't it inevitable that if this moratorium stays in place, you're going to see Shell, you're going to see Exxon, you're going to see these guys leave the Gulf? Yes, absolutely you will, because the producers work with the oil field service sector, and what will happen is that as the moratorium um, goes further out, or if it should go beyond six months, that you will begin to see drill rigs leave the Gulf. And in fact, that's already happened. Drill rigs have already dropped by 50% in the Gulf. And that's exactly it. They're going to go to geographies that are somewhat more, how can you say, you know, regulatory friendly right. and go to waters where they can drill and where they can work. Like where? In South America or where, where else? They'd go to, I'd say Asia is probably the predominant place where you'll see most uh, drill rig, you know, increased activity in Asia, perhaps even the west coasts of Africa. Okay. But you'll see all these drill rigs begin to move where they can, can work and can increase revenue revenues for the companies that support them, and this would be the oil field service sector companies, okay. the Halliburton's, Baker Hughes of the world. Okay. All right, Gianna, we'll have to leave it there, but good to talk with you. Gianna Byrne of Brookshire Advisory.